So at work, I have to write a lot of root cause analysis documents, which is how we perform investigations after an incident occurs. And as part of the RCA process, I have to record the duration of the incident. So if an incident started on this date and ended on this date, I have to figure out what the hours and minutes based duration of that is, uh, which given my date math skills is not something I can do easily in my head. So I've created a small angular utility here, which will actually perform that delta for me. So we can see if I scroll this down, uh, what we can see is that between these two dates, we have a variety of outputs for the same delta. So this is 694,000 seconds, or it's 11,000 minutes and three seconds, or it's 193 hours and two minutes. And this is actually the uh, duration I need for the RCA write-up. Or we can see that it's eight days, one hour, two minutes, and three seconds, or one week, one day, one hour, two minutes, and three seconds. Uh, so let's take a look at how that works. It's actually, it was kind of fun to write. It's recursive-esque in nature. It's not recursion, but it's, it feels recursion-y. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, everybody loves recursion. So let's jump over into the Angular component here. So this is my app component, and you can see that I have two inputs, and I'm not going to even bother with um, the form module. I'm just going to get a reference to the from input and the to input at any time an input event is triggered on one of these elements I just call parse dates and I'm just passing in uh, the two the the two inputs so if we jump down to what parse dates is uh, this just does some validation I'm using date parse here to parse these strings so this is just uh, you know this could be anything here I could it's pretty lenient in terms of zeros I think I'm pretty sure I can take off the AMs and everything um, right if I do like it'll start to tell me that it's starting to hit uh, invalid date ranges. Um, but let's just refresh to get back to our default date. So this is just some validation. Uh, if it's able to parse the dates, we can then get the delta seconds. So we essentially take the milliseconds delta between the to and the from. We divide by a thousand to get the delta seconds. And then uh, each one of the deltas is calculated using a separate method. So uh, let's just jump back up here for a second. So we can see that I have a, a UL here with an NG4 and I'm looping over the delta of deltas, and that deltas is the collection right here. So first I'm calculating the seconds delta, then the minutes and seconds, then the hours, minutes, seconds, days, hours, minutes, seconds, weekdays, hours, minutes, seconds, so on and so forth. Now what's kind of cool about these, at least in my opinion, is that they're somewhat recursion-y in that each one actually builds on the results of the one before it. So this one builds on this one, this one builds on this one, this one builds on this one, all the way down to seconds, and of course seconds is the sort of base unit of measurement that we have, so the recursion would stop at that point. So let's take a look at what that means. So if we look at this one, what we can see is we're getting uh, the delta here, that's the delta in seconds, and I'm going to calculate how many weeks there are accounted for in that delta. So I'm going to divide by uh, seconds, and then minutes, and then hours, and then days, right? And that'll give us the number of weeks rounding down. And then I subtract essentially the number of weeks times that same duration in seconds from that original delta to get the remainder. So this is the number of seconds after we've accounted for the number of weeks. Then I'm going to return an array that starts with the weeks. And then you see here, uh, again, not quite recursively, but I'm going to call it recursively, calls the next lower down method, which is the days, hours, minutes, and seconds method. And if we jump to that one, we can see that it works in the same way. It's going to calculate the number of days in the past in delta, which remember is the remainder of the previous calculation, which then itself calculates another remainder when the days are taken out, and then again recursively esque calls the lower down function hours, minutes, and seconds, which then does the same thing, hours calculates the remainder, calls the next thing down, which calculates the minutes, calculates its remainder once the minutes are removed, calculates seconds, and then of course all the way down to the bottom, and once you have seconds there is no further calculation to actually do. So again, it's not quite recursion, but it feels recursion-y to me, and I don't know, there seems to be an elegance to it. Maybe it's just because it's Friday and I haven't written TypeScript in a while and I'm very excited about it. Um, but that's basically it. It was just a lot of fun to write. Uh, formatting, all I'm doing is looping over the, the values here. So each one of these methods returns an array of numbers, and you can see that each array builds kind of concats or inlines the results of the, of, the, of the recursive call. So essentially what we do is we end up with uh, an array of values that starts with weeks, uh, days, hours, minutes, seconds, 
and I'm just looping over that backwards so that I know which one's the seconds, um, and then applying the, the output to it. I'm just concatenating the locale string, which puts in the commas, uh, right, and just, you know, makes it pretty like this. Uh, so anyway, just a lot of fun. Uh, fun little Friday kata, code kata, and uh, a great way to end the week.